Hello and welcome back to another one of Paul's beer reviews. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, today I've got a lager to review for you and it's uh, an Italian lager. Well, I say it's an Italian lager, it's actually brewed over here now. Uh, but it's readily available, it's in the supermarkets. It is the Berificio Angelo Parotti, Italian premium beer, coming in at 4.8% ABV. Get this in, I think, most of the supermarkets now. Um, I picked this particular bottle up in Sainsbury's. It cost me £1.80. And it's a big 660ml bottle. So you're getting more than a pint there. £1.80. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it, I think? Um, so, yeah, I've had this one once before. And I seem to remember quite enjoying it. Um, I've had a couple of people ask me to review it. So here we go. So, yeah, the Berificio. Berificio. <laughs> Berificio Angelo Perotti. Or Poretti. I will get the pronunciation right in a minute. We'll try it one more time. Birificio Angelo Peretti. Italian Hot Masters Bira Italiana Premium. And brewed with four hops, it says here. Does it specify the hops? I bet it doesn't. There's a bit of flavour text, a bit of story. It says, In 1877, our founder Angelo Peretti established the Birificio Angelo Peretti Brewery in the foothills of the Campo del Fiore mountain range in Valgana, uh, northern Italy. Today, our beer is brewed on the traditional Italian recipe, which delivers a full flavoured lager with an assertive hoppy bitterness, a flavour profile iconic to the Italian aperitivo culture, where better drinks are used to ignite the appetite and begin a dining experience. Uh, ingredients, water, malt, barley, <coughs> barley and hops. And yeah, it says a premium lager brewed and bottled in the UK by Colesburg Marston's Brewing Company in Wolverhampton. So yeah, beautifully labelled Italian beer brewed in the Midlands. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, but they specify the fact they use four different hops. They don't tell you what hops they've used, but there you go. So 4.8%, 660ml, £1.80 in Sainsbury's. Let's stop waffling. There's the bottle cap. Same as the label. Let's get this cap off. Get the beer into a glass. Loads of smoke when you open to that one. And a bubble. Wow. Get it into a glass. See if it's any good. Slightly aggressive pour. See if I can get a head on it. Developed a bit of a head. I'll leave that there so we can see it. There's the beer in the glass. It's really cold, so there's straight away a haze. Um, but that is crystal clear. Good levels of carbonation on that one. Plenty of carbonation. This is not a nucleated glass, but there is plenty of carbonation rushing out the middle of it. Uh, it's hanging on to a one finger, slightly creamy. Tightly compact, white head. Let's get me snouting, see what the aroma's saying. Not a great deal. Touch of honeyed citrus. A touch of that sort of malty, barley malt aroma. You smelt it a million times before. It's uh, a not a particularly expensively made lager aroma. But it smells okay. There's no nasties. There's no real metallic edginess to it. It smells all right. Let's get stuck in. Cheers. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's actually quite nicely made. Um, it's a decent recipe. Should I say, because I mean, if you leave it to Carlsberg and Marston's, I don't suppose you'd be getting too much of a decent lager. It's better than Carlsberg, let's put it that way. Um, it's quite a nice drying finish to it, I'm noticing now, as I'm chatting. There's a bitterness. There's a lingering, slightly hoppy bitterness to it. Slightly drying. And it makes you want to go back for another swig, which is exactly what I'm going to do. It's light, but it's not thin, which is good. It's refreshing. It is citrusy when it first hits your tongue. First thing you notice. A 
light yet full bodied. It does coat the palette. The malt bill is actually doing a bit of work here. Touch of citrus, sort of slightly sweet, sort of lemon citrus touch on arrival. Not much. The carbonation on this particular bottle isn't crazy, which is making it very drinkable. Bit of lacing on the glass as well, there. Um, yeah, there's that sort of malty character. That touch of malt, touch of sweetness. And then at the back end, there's a, a definitely a hoppy character. The fact that they specify there's four hops used to make this beer. Um, that's... I mean, nowadays, that's quite bold for a, a mass-produced lager to say anything like that on the labelling. Normally, they shy away from that kind of thing. Brewed with four hops. They've got a picture of the hop on it, specifying the fact that it's brewed with four hops. They're not trying to hide from it. It has a hoppy character. Not much. Not much. I don't think they've exactly chucked them all in. It's quite light, quite sparing with the hops, but it's certainly a hoppy character. Certainly a bitterness, even now. Still tasting that touch of bitterness, but it's it's a clean bitterness. It's a, it's a hoppy bitterness. It's not anything untoward. There's no sort of metallic, slightly chemically artificial bitterness to it. It tastes it tastes good. It tastes clean. It tastes fresh. Yeah, it, it, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's refreshing on with the weather we've had lately where it's been you know just sweltering um ice cold is perfect it's perfect for that sense it will refresh you it won't leave an horrible aftertaste it's a clean crisp refreshing lager with a nice bit of say hoppy bitterness at the back end that rounds it off nicely it's it's all minimal in what it does but everything it does is perfectly fine it's not going to blow your mind Excuse me, but it's better than most of the other mass-produced lagers you're going to get in a supermarket. Um, I just think we've got some really good choices in the supermarkets at the moment. Uh, Madri, I rate that. I think that's a perfectly decent lager. You can buy that in pretty much every single shop you walk into now. Um, I enjoyed the Heineken Silver product that they brought out earlier this year. In terms of a 4% easy drinking lager, I think that's absolutely fine. Um You've got all the imported stuff. You've still got your San Miguel's, which I think is fine. You've got your Estrellas. You know, you've got plenty of stuff. You've got your Pilsner Arkells, your Vorsteiners, Kronbackers. There's some really good lagers available to us in supermarkets at the moment. And this, for me, is just it's a, another perfectly decent one. It's not going to blow your mind. You're still, it's still not going to compete with the, the German Heller's lagers or anything like that. But it's clean, it's crisp, it's refreshing. And that tiny bit of bitterness at the back end... Balances it all out. Um, there's no nasties. It's just a nicely produced lager. The recipe is obviously a decent one. So Carlsberg and Masters haven't been able to completely balls it up. So well done to them. Um, I think it's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. And for 180, for 660 ml bottle, it's a bargain. I'll give that a solid 7 out of 10. Um, so yeah. Berificio Angelo Paretti. Available in all the supermarkets. Um, 7 out of 10. Decent. Decent enough. Hope you've enjoyed the review. Give it a thumbs up if you have. I do appreciate that. Until my next one, you take care.